Hello, everybody. Welcome to the broadcast of today's game between the Oakland A's and the Boston Red Sox. This is Monty Moore along with John Miller. Hope you're having a pleasant Sunday wherever you are. If you're on your way to the ballpark, take your time. We got a lot of time here. Good ball game coming up today. Juan Marichal will be pitching against the Oakland A's in regular league competition for the very first time. The A's have batted against him a little bit in spring training over the years when he's with the San Francisco Giants. But today, the money's on the line, and big money it might be, too, for the Giants. Cast off Juan Marichal because the Boston Red Sox look right now to be the strong favorite to win the Eastern Division in the American League. And the A's in the West, even though they both have formidable opponents still coming. Cleveland won their game today, coming from behind to beat the White Sox. But Kansas City is going to walk Milwaukee again today, it looks like. The Royals, who won seven of their last eight ball games, but still have picked up only two games on the A's. But that's two pretty big games to pick up in that one week's time are coming hard now. They've got a little Eastern road trip ahead of them, as do the A's when they get through with this one. Today, the Red Sox have a record of 62 wins and 51 losses. The Oakland A's are 67 and 48. Here at the Oakland Coliseum, as we look out on the field, we see the A's famous field mascot, Charlie O. Got a couple little kids on him out there and doing his bowing job. Incidentally, tomorrow night, we have a pleasant surprise for the fans who will be coming for our family night game, Stan Koska who's the trainer for Charlie O'Demeo, is going to have cricket. Now, that's the world's smallest registered horse. He'll be on the field here with Charlie O a half hour before game time through the courtesy of Mr. and Mrs. Ray Ely, who have brought cricket to the Oakland Coliseum for many farmer's days in the past and various other occasions. He's really a cute little pony, the world's smallest. And he'll be out here with one of the world's most honored mules, Charlie O, who's been having a little lumbago in his back. They tell us lately, but uh, he's up and at him here again today and feels very good about getting out there in his big trailer pulled by that great Dodge. So he's doing his final bows, and here to make his first bow of the day is John Miller. Yeah, it's a little lumbago on my back, too, but it's... Yeah, sorry, don't go too far. you got to work it out. <laughs> <laughs> they took me out, and I paraded around the field a little bit before the game, and it's feeling better. For the Boston Red Sox today... <laughs> I forgot to tell you, John, we have something new up here today. <laughs> Before you get the lineup, you know, we've been mentioning that, that ball players call home runs dingers. And that's something kind of new this year. I don't know, maybe they're doing some last year, but it's gotten a little bit more prevalent. So we said on the air one day, well, if they're going to call them dingers, we ought to have a bell to ding here when the A's hit a dinger. Well, I knew some fan had come through, but I didn't know it'd be like this. A couple of really great Oakland A's fans, Vera Ruth and Ernie Guerin, who run a little... Um, store out in Walnut Creek, the Roadrunner. It's an antique shop, and there in their shop, they came up with a uh, ship bell, which they said we could use for the home run hit at home, and for the dingers hit on the road, a school bell. So, so we got a couple of dingers here now for real. All right, with that dinging introduction, John, here you go. <laughs> That's a tough act to follow. <laughs> Well, the Boston, there really are bells in here. We ought to learn how to play those. We can play little tunes between innings. Juan Benitez leads it off in left field. For Boston, Cecil Cooper acts as the designated hitter. Rico Petroselli is at third base. Carl Yastrzemski is at first base. The right fielder is Dwight Evans for Boston, batting fifth. Rick Miller is in center field. At second base is Doug Griffin. Rick Morrison is at shortstop, and the catcher batting ninth is a young ball player for the Red Sox, brought up when Carlton Fisk went on the disabled list, Tim Blackwell, he bats ninth, and on the mound, right-hander Juan Marichal, 242 lifetime victories, and 238 of those came during his stay in the National League, 4-1 this year. For the Oakland A's, Bill North leads it off, and he's in center field. A. Susalu is the designated hitter. Sal Bando plays third base. In right field is Reggie Jackson. Joe Rudy plays at first base, batting fifth for the A's. Gene Tennis is the catcher, hitting sixth. Angel Mongual is in left field. Dick Green is the second baseman. And Dow Maxwell bats ninth, and he is the A shortstop today. And on the mound, right-hander Glenn Abbott, who had a four-game winning streak snapped in his last start, which was a week, a week ago today, despite pitching a very 
fine effort against the Minnesota Twins, only to lose the game two to one on a couple of hits and in late innings in that ball game. And he lost two to one despite pitching very well on Minnesota's home turf. So Abby had a four game winning streak snap, but he's still having himself a good year for the A's. Winning four, losing two with a 2.84 earned run average. The umpiring alignment for the game today, behind home plate calling the balls and strikes will be Larry McCoy. Joe Brinkman will be at first base. Nick Bremigan is at second base. And Nestor Shylock is at third base. Blue skies here at the Oakland Coliseum today. It's a sunshiny day, a beautiful day here in Oakland. Overhead just with with so clouds scattered about, but more or less just painted onto that blue sky. So it is a beautiful afternoon here at the ballpark. Crowd is somewhere in the neighborhood of what we had here Friday night and yesterday. 13, 14,000 maybe. As Juan Marichal comes back to the Bay Area for the first time since the Giants let him go. This is the rubber match of this three-game series between these two ball clubs. The A's lost the first game 6-2 to to the Red Sox here on Friday night to Bill Lee, but won yesterday 5-3 to behind Vita Blue, so the A's will try to win their first series of the year from Boston as they were swept in Boston and they lost two out of three here in Oakland the last time they met and saw their first chance at a series win over the Red Sox this year. Glenn Abbott has taken his place out of the mound. Red Sox coaches take their places. Eddie Popowski at first base and Don Zimmer at third base. Appears to be just a slight breeze. The flanks in deep center field are just barely blowing around and when they do whip up a little bit it appears to be blowing out of here. Right. It should be an interesting game. We're set to go. And here's the commander. Ronnie Moore. <laughs> here's the first pitch to Juan Benick as a new class of foul out towards the A's roof end and right under the fence. And here's the first foul. Juan Benick is a brick swinging center fielder man. He's 256. He's got five overs and 25 runs. Here's the first pitch to Juan Benick. Abby throws and this is going out there. Mm -hmm. The A's play Benica three runs in the way. Van Gaal is field. Billy North. He's just a few steps to the game. Right through our eyes. Uh, Jackson's very shallow in that field. Benica has his back foot almost out of the batter's box. Abbott gets together with Gene Tennant, and here's his pitch. Fastball line right up the middle. Base hit. They're going to have to hurry to hold him to one. Billy North over to pick it up. Benica is going to hold on at first. Oh, super. Here's Cecil Cooper, the designated hitter for the Red Sox. He's hitting 279 for the year, and he has eight home runs. He's a left-handed batter. Glenn Abbott is not the overpowering type pitcher that will keep a team from getting hit. He gives up six, seven, eight hits of all games. But he usually doesn't walk very many and doesn't help them out that way. Benica's leading off first. Here's a pitch. Curveball hit on the ground to the first base side. Rudy's got it. Steps on first and doesn't throw to second base. Joe had a chance to get the lead runner down at second real easy. But he decided to step on first instead. And then it was too late to go to second base. So Cecil Cooper, who got jammed with that ball, just hit a slow roller to the first base side. Move Benica's up. Benicus can run, and Joe must have thought he didn't have time. Now here's Rico Petroselli. He takes inside ball one. Petro is hitting 301 for Boston. He leads their club in home runs with 15, and in runs batted in with 65. A right-handed hitter. Benicus down on second. Here's the pitch. Inside a ball at 2-0. Now Gene Tennis is asking for time. He's going to talk to Lynn Abbott. Might not have had the signs right on those last two pitches. With the runner at second base, they switch over. Dino has to look up to talk to Glenn Abbott. He's six feet, six inches tall. Oh, the Red Sox have Petroselli up, Yastrzemski on deck with the runner on second base. Two-hole pitch. Foul ball back here. Abbott throws to the plate. Fly ball on the infield. 
It's going to be Dick Green taking it right in behind the pitcher's mound. He's got it. People were still talking around here today in the press room before the ball game about that fantastic anticipatory play Dick Green made yesterday on a big time in the game to take a hit away from Danny Cater. He caught a line drive in right center field a good 45, 50 feet behind second base. And he caught it easily. He was back there. And the ball was hit. He's a right-handed batter. He just knew Danny Cater and just flat took a hit and maybe a game away from him in the Red Sox. Here's Carl Yastrzemski batting 312. First base is open here. They're going right at him with a good curve low. Ball one. Yaz has 12 homers, 60 runs batted in. Gaze playing as a full hitter. And the pitch. Inside strike. Right on the corner. One ball, one strike. You come to a game sometime. Make sure you take time to watch the infielders move around as the pitch is on the way to the plate. Some of them move all the time. They know where the pitch is supposed to go. Here it comes. Uh, bouncing ball hit right side. Dick Green over to his left. He's got it out in right field. Throws the first for the out. Greeny going way over to his left. And he was one of those infielders who was moving. As that pitch went in, he knew where it was going to be hit if it were hit. So the... Very fine observation fires. The Dick Green got him out of the inning. No runs. They hit. They left a man after a half inning. There's no score. Last half of the first inning coming for the Oakland A's, and here's a big score from the National League. The Dodgers behind Don Sutton defeated the Cardinals today, 3-1. to one. Sutton pitched a five-hitter, and he was in a losing streak early, and now has really been coming on like gangbusters. He won something like five out of his last six. So the Dodgers win a big one over the Cardinals today, 3-1. to one. Sutton over McLaughlin. They had 37,000 people in St. Louis for that one. So now the question is, what did the Phillies do and what did the Reds do? And we'll have that answer for you, too, before very long. Right now to the last half of the first inning, the Oakland Day is against the Dominican Dandy. Juan Marichal. It'll be Bill North to lead it off, and Billy in the last three games has had two hits the ball game. The batting average is at its highest level of the season except for one day when he was hitting 265. He's now at 264. Marichal has an earned run average of 5.31. It's an astronomical figure accumulated while he was hurt early in the year. Red Sox straight up on Billy North, up to the third baseman who's very shallow. Marichal's first pitch of the game off that high leg kick is a curve thrown right over the top, missing inside. He'll throw it anywhere from any direction and with any kind of a pitch and varying speeds, they tell us. We've seen very little of Juan Marichal in our career because he's always been over in that other league. Pitch to North, curve ball, dropped in there for a strike. Seeing him for the first time might be bothersome to some of these American League hitters because of that high leg kick and the varying speed. One of the last pitchers around to throw purely right over the top, but not exclusively. Fastball North, but to pass him out. He may have a hit. He has a hit, coasting in the first base. Billy North dropping the perfect punt. More than dropping it, he shoved it. Marishaw with a high leg kick comes down and falls off to the first base line. They had their shortstop playing behind second. So Billy obviously had studied that and figured if I can get it past Marichal on Marichal's right, I've got a hit. And he coasted in the first base. That one was so easy. So now here is Jesus Alou. Alou batting 302. Red Sox stopped him in here on Friday night 0 for 5, but he has been stopped very little of late. North with 41 stolen bases gets back in. I don't know what kind of a move Marichal has to first. But if he pitches off the stretch with that high leg kick, You'll see North taking off. Drops down very slowly as the belt turns and throws a first pretty quick move off the sidearm delivery, and he didn't get him. Good lively crowd already there. Yelling. Now Marichal down to the waist, takes his foot off the rubber, and looks Billy North back in. Fans get on him a little bit. It is a lively crowd, isn't it? Game's on between Marichal and North. There's another throw to first. He just lobbed that one. Billy has stolen 41 bases for the A's. 
Marichal used to have some great duels with Maury Wills of the Dodgers. He'd throw a seven, eight, nine, ten times in a row over there trying to keep Wills close. Maury used to say that Juan picked him off probably as much, if not more, than anybody. There's a throw to first. He's got him. He picked him off. Billy Norris jumped off to a big lead, and Alvin Dark is screaming out of the dugout that it should have been a ball call. He did not get it from the plate umpire. He's going over to the first base umpire. Alvin is yelling, balk. He's pointing his finger at the first base umpire, Joe Brinkman, who's a rookie umpire in his league, and he doesn't have much chance to get him that change right here. Well, to be around that long, almost 3,500 innings, Marichal's got to have a few tricks up his sleeve and bent those knees and quickly threw over there, and he had Billy North, and he wasn't even close. So there's one out, nobody on, and here's Jesus Alou. It looked as if he had made up his mind he was going to throw that ball to first base until he either got north or wore his arm out. Or wore Billy out. Now the pitch to Alou. And it's low out to that ball one. These fellows were teammates. Alou knows him very well. He spent most of his major league career in the National League. Mashow's 1-0 pitch. Sidearm curveball hit to the third baseman right near the bag. Petroselli plays him perfectly and throws him out. Two away. Now here's Sal Bando. He's team captain hitting for the season. 262 with 16 home runs. 80 runs batted in. Crash out, big wind. The pitch is low and outside. Ball one. The Giants are playing a doubleheader today. John will have those scores for you of all the Major League games coming up very shortly. One over to Bando. Outside, ball two. Marshall has been known as an outstanding control pitcher. He didn't walk anybody in his seven innings his last outing. 2-0 and on Bando. Low curveball, strike call. Now screaming at the plate umpire, McCoy, on that one. Might have a few tense moments here today. The A's would like to win this game, and of course the Red Sox too. Very badly. 2 1 pitch. Bando strokes it to the third baseman. Petroselli guns him down. Foul didn't have much of a cut at that one. So Marischal is the master here in the first inning, and we have no score. Top half of the second inning, Dwight Evans leads off for the Red Sox. He's a 297 hitter for the year. Hit seven home runs and has 55 runs batted in. Here's a long fly ball foul off the left field side. Back into the seat. Boy, Evans has got a lot of power. He didn't really seem to have a big swing at that, but yet hit it well past home run distance. Abbott's 0-1 pitch. Curve outside of ball. Evans ran up on that ball as if he wanted to bunt it. curve and it's a beauty. Call strike. Evans clinched on that one just enough that he couldn't pull the trigger. And that pitch came right in there. Abby kicks that white shoe in the air and throws a fastball low and inside. Two balls, two strikes. I think he thought he had a strike out there and so did Gene Tennant. Gino hustled over to get that ball thinking that it should have been called a strike. No score, we're in the top of the second. The A's and the Red Sox. The ninth game of the year between these two teams. The Red Sox have won six of the first eight. Curve outside, ball three. Payoff pitch. That ball hit on the ground to Bando. He moves two steps to his right, comes up with it, and throws his man out. 
One away in the second, and that brings up Rick Miller, the center fielder. Batting 250 with five home runs. He's a left-hand hitter and a very fine defensive outfielder. Red Sox have some veterans out in that pitching staff this year. They picked up in trades. Diego Segui, Bob Beal. They're their short relief men. Miller takes from Abbott High and outside of all. Getting Marichal. They didn't know what they were going to do with him, a starter or a reliever. They have Dick Drago they got from Kansas City. Very deep in the pitching department for the first time in my memory. 1 0 to Miller, high and inside. It's ball two. Abbott had won four decisions in a row, beating Kansas City 7 1 on June 28th, California Angels 3 2 on July 3rd, and a full game five hitter here. A couple of starts where he didn't get a win or a loss. Miller slices this ball foul. Then he beat Minnesota 5 to 3, and he beat Texas 11 to 3 before his last start against Minnesota. Abbey was beaten by the Twins 2 to 1. Not a chance to win that game. He's left a lot of men on. He didn't walk anybody. Struck out four. Two balls and one strike on Rick Miller. Here's ball three. Three and one count. Here's ball four, and Miller is on. Abbott yeah, missed the same way on all of those, high and outside. And it brings up Doug Griffin. Red Sox second baseman and a good one. Batting 300 for the year, 301. He's not hit a home run yet. Not a big guy. He went to the Red Sox from the California Angels. Wasn't playing much for the Angels and became an instant hero in Boston as an acrobatic fielding second baseman. Abbott sets. Here's the pitch. Fly ball foul off first. Rudy's going to have to hurry to get over there. Can't make it. Right near the stands, there's a big tarpaulin roll there. And Joe couldn't get his hand on it. Actually, a fan got a hat on it before Joe got a hand on it. One strike to count on Duck Griffin. There's no score. We're in the second inning. Remember, tomorrow night is family night here at the Oakland Coliseum. There's still tickets left for tomorrow night. You can get them here at the Coliseum. We'd suggest you do it early in the day or get here early before the game tomorrow night. Our ticket window's open at 9 o'clock, or you can buy them today anytime. Big lead for Miller. He's going. The pitch is swung on and fouled off. The Red Sox have been a running team this year, a running and hitting team. And they started Miller from first base that time with Griffin trying to hit it to right. Everybody's in for half price tomorrow night. It ought to be a fine pitching matchup. Catfish Hunter for the A's. And Pat Dobson, who's beaten the Oakland A's a couple of times this year. Always held a hex over this ball club. It'll start at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. There goes the runner again. A pitch it outside. Tennis throws a second base. A little off to the side. And he seals it. Gino's throw was off to the third base side. Dick Green caught that ball and then actually threw himself back into the feet of the runner and put the tag on but it was too late. So Miller steals on a no ball two strike count. That's his 10th stolen base of the year. For the Red Sox, steal number 80. Takes the double playoff here. Now the Sox have a couple of pops they're trying to knock in the go ahead run. Abbott pitch to Griffin is low. Gino made a fine throw down there considering the fact that he had to reach low and outside to catch the ball. With two strikes on, I've noticed more and more of the base stealers are running on that count, 0-2, figuring that the pitcher's going to be throwing a curveball in the dirt or a waste pitch outside somewhere that might be tough for the catcher to handle. Abby's pitch, missing outside. He is now 3-2 and two on the batter. He's been at three balls on a lot of hitters already in this game.
Griffin cocks the bat. Here's the payoff pitch. Little looper right to the shortstop. Over his head, left field, a base hit. A run's going to score. Rick Miller scores to the stolen base. Got him a run. Griffin flips one right over the head of Dow Maxville. He's had four straight hits against the A's, and I think that was about the hardest hit one he's had among the four. He hit that one right on the fist. West Stock out to talk to Glenn Abbott. Boy, you can see what being able to hold a runner on means. Juan Marichal in the first inning. Managed to pick off Bill North, nobody down. And the A's next two batters were helplessly out on ground balls to third near Miller Steele. And the next man gets a little blue single and they leave one nothing. Batter is Rick Burleson, the shortstop. Abba turns and throws over to first. A pickoff move to first base that is the kind that would hold a runner on or pick a man off is one developed over many years of practice. Abby's pitch to the plate, strike call on the inside corner. He came with a very quick move to the plate that time. Now the tall right-hander looks over at Griffin. He's leading off the pitch to the plate, foul back. Kansas City leading Milwaukee five to one after eight innings today. They got five runs in the very first inning. Boy, they are tough in Kansas City. Here's a pitch to pitch out. Nobody's going anywhere. So on that 0-2 cap, the A's pitched out a minute ago on 0-2. Miller stole. Burleson's hitting the ball very well for Boston. 3-10 is his average. There goes the runner. The pitch is a curve. Swung on and fouled down. Red Sox are running here today. There's more overall speed on their ball club than they've had in many years. Speed and pitching. They've replaced a lot of power over there. One ball, two strikes. Doug Griffin, the runner at first base. He's not going this time, and a pitch is hit deep to left field. It's a home run if it's fair. It's curving foul. Rick Burleson got a pitch hanging inside and really ripped it down that left field line. They're standing in there taking some pretty good rips off Big Glenn. So if he gets a reprieve, he goes back to work on a one and two count, throwing the first, holding Griffin over there. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball, it didn't break much. Stayed inside all the way, it's two and two. Big lead for the runner at first base, and he draws a throw, gets back in head first. There goes the runner, the pitch out. Gino throws a second right on target. He's out a mile. So the A's out gets the Red Sox that time with a 2 2 count, they pitched out. And got the man at second base going. Let's pause for station identification on the Golden Pacific Sports Network. <laughs> well, that's one way to stop a running team if you can afford to pitch out. Now here's a 3-2 pitch on the way. 
High drive, deep left field. That ball's hit well. Angel's back to the wall, and he's got room. He's got it. One run for Boston. They had a hit and left nobody. The score after an inning and a half is 1-0 Boston. A.G. Jackson will start it off now for the A's. The last half of the second inning. A reminder that the A's now have on sale by mail only the tickets for American League Championship Playoff Series for 1974. And we'll be giving you the information on how you can order those and make sure that you have viewers for the playoffs should the A's get in them. So as soon as we get time in our ball game, we'll give you information on how you can order playoff tickets for 1974 should the A's get in. So get yourself a pencil and a piece of paper, and we'll give it to you a little later. Here's Reggie Jackson batting 313 with 70 RBIs. Marischal's pitch to him is in there. Call strike, overhanded fastball. Reggie's hit 21 home runs this year. Or taters or dingers or whatever you want to call them. Marshall's pitch in the dirt. Early in the year, it was felt by many that Marshall might be through as a major league pitcher. Came back and got his own doctor here in the Bay Area. And they gave him the advice he did not need the operation, and he's recovered well, and here he is pitching beautifully for the Red Sox. Pitch to Jackson. Fastball low. He can still pop it once in a while. And he has so many different speeds that when he does throw a fastball by there, it really looks quick, probably faster than it is. Marshall picks to Jackson. High pop-up behind the plate. Back near the screen, over the screen it goes. Reggie still got a break. This is a guy trying to get out of that one, out of the way of that one, and it almost got into the way of it. That was coming down. He took his eye off of it, started leaning to the right, right across his wife, I suppose, and it landed one seat over to the right of him. Two balls, two strikes on Reggie Jackson. He'll be followed to the plate by Joe Rudy and Gene Tennis. The Red Sox are leading the A's 1-0 in the second inning. Big highlight kick, the pitch, Jackson swings and misses, strike three, Marichal threw it right by him. One out, second inning, and the batter now is Joe Rudy. Joe's batting 310, he's had base hits the last six games in a row, including three home runs during that stretch. Now has 14 homers for the year, 73 runs batted in. It looks like Marichal is going to be tough. Gave up a bunt single to Billy North and then picked him off first base. Right hander set, curveball, Rudy hits in the air to center field, not very deep at all. Rick Miller coming in. No problems, he has it, and there are two down. And the A's catcher Gene Tennis comes on. Gino gained six points on his batting average yesterday with three hits. Drove in a couple of runs, and now has 49 runs batted in for the year. 16 home runs. Red Sox one and the A's nothing. That's the score right here in the second inning. The pitch to tennis. Curveball hit on the ground. Foul off third base. Red Sox really played Gino right near that line at third. He pulls almost everything he hits. One strike to count. Bouncy ball right to the third baseman. He's got him played perfectly, and Petroselli throws him out. It's three up, three down, right in the middle of the batting order. We've gone through two innings of play, and the Red Sox lead the A's one to nothing. Okay, it's the third inning, one nothing Boston. John Miller. Red Sox will have their rookie catcher, Tim Blackwell, to lead it off here in the third. Blackwell brought up from the minor leagues. The Red Sox top farm team in the International League, Triple A, Pawtucket. And here's a fellow who never really hit very high for average. His best average in the minor leagues was 283. 
But he had other years in the minor leagues where he hit only 235 and 249. And was only hitting around 200 this year when the Red Sox brought him up. He's a switch hitter. And they say he hits much better from the left side. He's a switch hitter right now, batting left-handed against Glenn Abbott. Abbott delivers. Low and outside for ball one. Blackwell has batted 62 times from the left side this year for a 274 average, and he's only batted seven times from the right without a hit. One off the check swing, it's a strike, it's one and one. So overall, Blackwell is batting 246. Since Carlton Fisk went on the disabled list, Blackwell has been platooning with Bob Montgomery. One one pitch, swinging, strike two. One and two. Montgomery has been going primarily against left-handed pitching and Blackwell against the right-handed. Say Blackwell is a better defensive catcher than Montgomery. One two pitch, there's a grounding ball to second base, picked up by Dick Green, and he throws him out, one away. Blackwell retired into the top of the batting order we go now, and Juan Benicus. Benicus let off the ball game with a base hit, headed for the alley in left center field. Bill North cut it off, held this speedy outfielder to a single. Benicus can really run. Scored from first base in a single against the A's earlier this year. He swings a shot, hits Bando on the shoulder, picked up by Maxwell, he throws him out! Benicus hit a line shot, took a wicked hop in front of Sal Bando. Looked like it just hit off his shoulder or off his left arm and somewhere on the left side of his body and just deflected right over into the glove of Dow Maxwell. He filled it and threw Benicus out. Bando an assist on that. From third to short to first on that one, 5-6-3. Danny Cater down there in the runway, the Red Sox offering Sal Bando a batting helmet. <laughs> There's Cecil Cooper. Two down, nobody on. Abbott to the plate, delivers a strike, it's on one. Cooper grounded out to first his first time. Big left-handed swinger hitting 278 for the Red Sox. Has eight home runs. Swings, a chopper, right side. Joe Rudy far to his right field. Underhand to Abbott covering first for the out. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on after two and a half innings. It is Boston one and Oakland nothing. A's come to bat now in the bottom of the third inning. Juan Marichal has set down the A's in order in both of the first two innings. He did allow a bunt single to Bill North, but then picked him off at first base. The A's have hit one fly ball against him, three ground balls, and a strikeout has been recorded by Marichal. Pitch to Angel Mangual on the outside corner, but it misses for a ball, 1-0. Marichal, a slow, deliberate motion, kicks back with the left foot, rocks it high, high in the air, brings the big right arm back and delivers. The pitch is a ground ball to shortstop, picked up by Burleson, he throws him out. Marichal really relies on the defense, especially these days. He doesn't strike out too many people any anymore. Marichal has a career earned run average of 2.84. There are only five pitchers in the history of Major League Baseball who have had better earned run averages during the course of their career. Walter Johnson, Grover Cleveland Alexander, Whitey Ford, and Bob Gibson are the four directly in front of him. There's Dick Green to bat against him now. Marichal won four and lost one this year. Winds and delivers. There's a swing and a bouncer foul, third baseline. Manichel doesn't throw as hard as he does now. Charlie Fox, when we saw him in Chicago talking about one, says that he'll just finesse you to death. Go inside, go outside, nibble at the corners, at the knees, hit that spot all the time. One strike pitch, he goes outside and misses with a fastball. It's one and one. Juan's very first game in the major leagues was in 1960 when Alvin Dark was the manager of the Giants. 1-1 one, one pitch, high for a ball, 2-1. Juan made his debut in the major leagues against the Philadelphia Phillies and had a no-hitter until the seventh or eighth inning against Philadelphia at old Connie Mack Stadium. Clay Dalrymple broke it up. The only hit Marichal gave up, and that his debut. 2-1 pitch, there's a swing and a foul ball off to the right. Two balls, two strikes to Dick Green. Marichal, starting in 1963, had a series of six 20-game seasons 
in seven years. The only year he didn't win 20, he left the Giants rotation with 14 victories in August. There's another 10 or 12 starts left, they figured. And that was the only year during the spring that he didn't win his 20. Here's his windup now on the 2-2 pitch to Dick Green. Over the top, he struck him out high on the inside and blew it by him. Strike out number two for Marichal, and down Maxwell will be the A's batter now. Maxwell for the A's is hitting 226. He's batted 31 times now. Campy Campaneras did just a bit of running today, not too much. Pitch to Maxwell, swing high drive to center. Up in the air, Rick Miller with the glasses down, looks up in the sunshine and makes the catch. So, in the third inning, the A's go out three up and three down. No runs, no hits, nobody left. After three full, Boston won, the A's nothing. Inning number four now, the Boston Red Sox have the power coming up against Glenn Abbott, Rico Petroselli, Carl Yastrzemski, and Dwight Evans. The Red Sox got a run in the second inning, a walk to Rick Miller, and then he stole second base, and Doug Griffin hit a blooper out over shortstop for a base hit. That scored Miller for the only run of the game. Petroselli popped out to Dick Green his first time. He's 0 for 1. Abbott to the plate. Delivers his strike. It's 0 1. Petroselli continues to hang on over 300. He has 15 home runs and 65 RBIs. One strike pitch. There's a curveball that misses low. Ball 1. 1 and 1. Petroselli moving away from that one. One ball, one strike. Carl Yastrzemski is on deck. Glenn Abbott delivers one and one. Swing at a high, high pop-up. Foul territory off the third base line. Sal Bander goes over, shades the eyes, and makes the catch. Petroselli is retired, one away, and Carl Yastrzemski. Yes. Has yet to get a hit in this series. He was 0 for 4 in the first game on Friday was 0 for 4 here yesterday against Vita Blue and is 0 for 1 today. He's 0 for 9 in the series, has lost 8 points in his batting average. Here's the windup in the pitch to Yastrzemski. Curveball on the outside corner for a strike, a beauty. Just nipped the outside corner. 0 and 1. Abbott winds and delivers 0 and 1. Fastball, Yastrzemski backing away from it. It's low for a ball, one and one. Yastrzemski had hit the A's very well before this series began, hitting up around the 375 mark against them. But Oakland pitching has stopped him here in this series. Here's the one-one pitch. Curveball swung on as a number right side of the infield. Dick Green picks it up and throws him out. Yeah, it's really got jammed on a sharp breaking curveball. And didn't hit it very well at all. He just rolled easily to second base. Two down, nobody on, and Dwight Evans. Kansas City got five runs in the first inning against Milwaukee today. Never got another one, but they didn't need another one. And they beat Milwaukee five to two, although the Brewers had 11 hits. Fudorf, the winner, with help from McDaniel and Bird in the ninth inning. The loser, Clyde Wright, who's now eight and 17. Here's the pitch to Dwight Evans. It's ball one. Evans grounded out to third his first time. Evans is hitting six consecutive games for the Red Sox. One up pitch, swinging and a foul ball at the plate. One ball, one strike. Red Sox have been very tough on Sundays. It's been one of their best days of the week. As far as wins and losses, they won 15 and lost only four on Sunday. One one pitch. Evans swings a high drive to left field. Fairly deep, but playable for Mongwell. Now he's looking up into the sun. He's having trouble, but makes the catch. Angel started dancing around out there, holding the glove to shade his eyes, and finally reached up and made the catch on that one. So the Red Sox go down. Here's three up and three down. Abbott has retired the last seven in a row, and the score after three and a half. Boston one, Oakland nothing. And he'll have to face the top of the A's batting order. And through three, Marichal has made it look pretty easy against Oakland. He has a lot of base hits. A uh, perfectly placed bunt by Bill North, but before Juan delivered a pitch to Jesus Alou, the next batter, he picked Billy North off for first base. The A's protested, saying that Juan had boxed. 
It moved his shoulder over toward first base before he threw over there. But the umpires let it stand as it was. The North was erased. And Juan has set down the next eight men in a row, so we start over again at the top of the order. Juan has set the re A's down on five ground balls. There's only been two fly balls hit in the first three innings, both high fly balls hit to shallow center field. So here's North, batting left-handed. His average is 266. Manichel winds and delivers. Let up for a strike. Oh, on one Manichel hasn't thrown that pitch very often. On one Manichel gives you the big motion. High leg kick and hides that ball behind his body. You don't see the ball until the last moment. He throws an off-speed pitch like that, really keeping a hitter off balance. Billy swings here and fouls it up behind the plate. So that one will go over the screen and out of play. No balls and two strikes. Marichal gives credit to Alvin Dark, as do a lot of the people who remember seeing Marichal, such as Bob Stevens, right over with the Chronicle, who followed Marichal's career throughout the time he pitched for the Giants. Said that Alvin Dark may have helped Juan turn a corner in his career very early. 0-2 pitch to North outside for a ball, 1-2. and two. Alvin had been going to the bullpen quite early with Juan, and Marichal was a little upset about it. Finally, Alvin told him one day, you're on your own. I don't care if it takes you five hours to pitch out there and you throw 300 pitches, but we're not going to the bullpen. Manicho went out and threw six consecutive complete games. Feels that was one of the real turning points of his career. One, two, pitch to North. He fastball, he struck him out. Marichal gets his third strikeout. He's gotten Jackson, Green, and now North in this ball game. One is out, and Jesus Salou, the batter. Ever since that time in Wine's career, he's always been one of the leaders in his league in complete games up until just the last three or four years. Jesus Salou now hits the ball very hard against Marichal his first time, but right at the third baseman, Petroselli. Juan kicks high, delivers. There's a slow breaking ball outside, and the dirt ball one. Alou hitting an even 300 for the A's. 39 hits now and 130 at bat. Marichal into that easy motion, the high kick, and delivers. The let-up misses low again, ball two. Marichal gave an indication he didn't like that call. Juan has sprouted a big mustache. Never had one while he was with the Giants. 2 all pitch now to Alou. Goes inside and misses again. Low ball three. Three and all. Dal Bando on deck. He's down by one. One to nothing. Bottom of the fourth. And wind up in the 3 all pitch. That shot goes down the middle with a fastball. It's three and one. Juan toes the first base side of the rubber. Gets his side from Blackwell and Roxton delivers three and one. Strike two call on the outside corner. Now Jesus Salou is upset with the umpire, Larry McCoy. Jesus just turned right around and shook his head and said, no, that wasn't a strike. McCoy hasn't been able to please either of these fellows from the Dominican Republic in this event. 3-2 pitch to Alou. Marichal delivers as a swing. Fly ball right center field. Pretty high up there. Going back as Miller. He drops the ball. Goes up against the fence. Alou goes to second base and will hang on. Miller started loping back as if he had that one all the way. Then started fooling around with his sunglasses. And as he just kept going deeper and deeper, he reached up and finally the ball hit the glove and just popped right out. It will go as an error on Miller. So outfielders are continuing to have problems with the sun here at the Coliseum. The A's lost two fly balls in the sun here yesterday. So the A's get a break. Alou is at second, and here's Sal Bando. Marichal at the belt. Comes in sidearm, misses with a sharp breaking ball. It's outside ball one. 
Marichal comes straight over the top. He'll throw three quarters. He'll go sidearm, and he'll sometimes drop down even farther than that and throw a submarine-type pitch. He's over the top here, and Bando swings and fouls it back. Out of play. One ball, one strike. Bando with a runner to pick up out there. Has 80 RBIs, and he hasn't been spending too many RBIs on the bases. He's not been hitting that well. Overall, his batting average just continues to plummet. I mean, go down. He's down to 261. Doesn't seem like it was that long ago when he was hitting over 300. But ironically enough, as his average has gone down, the RBIs have gone up. Now says he just seems to concentrate more when there's a runner on. A's down by a run. They've gotten a break here. Alou breaks off second. Now Marichal throws to second base. Not in time. Second baseman Griffin broke in. Marichal is set at the belt. Juan is upset with himself. He thought he had Jesus picked off. Thought he should have had him picked off anyway. Jesus started to break down the line from second base. And Marichal hadn't made his delivery yet. So he turned around with Griffin coming in, trying to pick him off. Looks at Alou now. Here's his 1-1 pitch. Misses outside. Ball two, two and one. I don't know where Jesus was going, do you? <laughs> <laughs> if he'd have let him keep running, though, he might just have gone on to third. I don't know. Griffin is playing right up the middle on Bando here. The pitch to Sal is inside and high. Ball three, three and one. Marichal fell behind Jesus to lose three balls and no strikes. Worked the count back to three and two and got Jesus to fly to deep right center field. Rick Miller dropped the ball out there. So now Alou is at second base. The count to Bando has gone to three and one. So Juan is getting himself into some trouble here. He's ready. Looks at Alou. Delivers homeward. On the outside corner for a strike, three and two. When three and one, Marichal just hit the outside corner. Three balls and two strikes. Juan is another one of these pitchers like a catfish hunter who's always given up a lot of home run balls. Throws a lot of strikes and a lot of innings. Now he's at the belt, checks to lose. A 3-2 pitch, swung on, high fly ball. Center field. Drifting out into left center now. Benicus comes over, but Miller calls him off and makes the catch. Shortstop Burleson had gone out there also. Very shallow left center field. And I don't know, it looked like they were fighting that sunshine out there again. It is tough. I talked to players here yesterday, and the sun is uh, a little different angle right now than it was the last time we were at home, and it's going to be bad. I know two years ago we had an awful time with the sun out here, and the afternoon ball game was about a week or two before the playoffs, and you know, the A's had some special long drills in daylight, and it seems to me, I remember they changed the night game or two to a day game to give a little more uh, practice in the sunshine, but it really got terrible out here in late August, and uh, September. Bando can't deliver the hit, so Alou is still in second base. It's up to Reggie Jackson. Marichal kicks high and delivers to him. Looks like he turned that one over on the outside, but missed with it. Ball one. One ball, no strike. Reggie struck out his first time. Marichal thrown in nothing but hard stuff. One. Sets at the belt. Looks at Alou. Delivers to Reggie. Sling, bouncer, first base side. Foul ball, just outside of first base. One ball, one strike to Jackson. His batting average right now, 312. Reggie for the A's this year now has had 21 homers and 70 RBIs. Reggie, kind of an unfamiliar, unfamiliar position for him on this ball club right now. He not only does not lead the team in RBIs, but he's third. Bando and Rudy both lead him. Here's Marichal, set. Delivers one and one. Throws the three-quarters fastball away outside. Ball two and one. Juan no longer wears the number 27 that he wore so long with the Giants. Carlton Fisk had that number with the Red Sox. Juan is taking on number 21. A little away from second again. Two down. He's down by a run. Marichal kicks, delivers two and one, a swinging strike. Looks like the bottom fell right out of that one. That's so throws a good sinker ball. That might have been the fork ball, you think? Fork ball or screw ball is one of those two. I don't know, probably a screw ball type thing, John. Two and two. Marichal has so many different pitches. 
and it can deliver just about all of them from three or four different angles. Over the top, three corners, side arm, submarine. It's two and two on Rutgers. And here's his pitch. Swing is a foul ball. Left field line hanging in the air. Benicus is going over. Also a set to Sully, but the neither one gets to it. And it drops foul in the A's bullpen. Reggie's still alive here in a duel with Juan Marichal. Two balls, two strikes. Marichal, a veteran of nine All-Star games, but only played in one World Series. That was back in 1962 with the Giants. Gets the new ball and rubs it up off the mound. A's down by a run here in the fourth inning. Had their only threat at all against Marichal up to now. Jesus Salou with one down. Safe on a fly ball that Rick Miller fought in the sunshine and eventually dropped, and Jesus got to second base. Marichal's come back to get Bando. Now he's trying to get Reggie with two down. The count, two and two. Here's one set, and the pitch. Swinging strike three. Might have been in again. Looks like the fourth ball is screwball, a hard screwball. So Reggie strikes out for the second time, and Marichal gets out of trouble. No runs, no hits. One error, one man left on. And we've played four full innings here at the Coliseum today with a score. Boston won, and the A's nothing. Well, it's the fifth inning. It's still one nothing. The Boston Red Sox are leading. Juan Marichal has the A's completely baffled. They've had only one hit, and that was a bunt single on the infield. Leading off for Boston now is Rick Miller, who walked and scored the game's only run. After stealing second, he scored on Griffin's single. Abbott's pitch to him is inside, ball one. Well, Marichal really worked on Reggie Jackson, threw him a couple of screwballs down and away. Neither one of them was strikes. Reggie went after both of them. He has thrown some family on him. The 1 0 pitch, fly ball left field. Angel backs up, now comes in a little bit and makes the catch. One out. Now here's Doug Griffin, the second baseman for Boston. The A's on their upcoming Eastern road trip will play in Boston for three games in Detroit and in Milwaukee. The Kansas City Royals have an Eastern road trip coming up in which they play at Milwaukee, at Detroit, at Cleveland, and at Baltimore. Pitch is fouled off. So how the two clubs do on that Eastern road trip could be fairly significant as to what kind of a lead the A's might be able to hold over the West. Those Royals get into streaks when they're almost unbeatable at home, and it looks like they're, they're in that streak right now. On their artificial turf, they won, what, 8 out of 9, now, I believe it is, or 7 out of 8. Abby's 0-1 pitch, missing outside. The ball and a strike. The A's are all through with Baltimore and Cleveland. One hopper to Bando. He leaps high to get it and throws the first for the out. The Royals do not play Boston anymore, and the A's do. Oakland does not play Cleveland anymore. And Kansas City does. Otherwise, our Eastern Road trip will take us into the same city. Here's Rick Burleson, who lined out the left field in the second inning. Abbott misses high and inside, ball one. Abbott got hooked up in a very low-scoring game his last outing and lost 2-1 to one to the Minnesota Twins. Here he is in a one nothing battle today. Burleson takes a cut fastball that just nails the outside corner. It's one and one. Abbott doesn't call it a slider, but it has the same action. One one pitch. Same pitch misses outside the ball, two and one. There's an Oakland A's fan here today. He's a super fan with season tickets and the whole work. He's 81 years old today. Chet Hendricks. And we wish him a happy birthday. I understand he always listens to our games, whether he's here or at home. Burleson pops up right behind the plate. Gino slings the mask out of the way. And in the batter's box, just a little out of it, makes the catch. Oh, he's good on pop fly balls. 
So, Glenn Abbott now has retired 10 Boston Red Sox batters in a row, but Marischal is doing the same for the Oakland A's, and we have a 1-0 game going to the last of the fifth. Last half of the fifth inning, Joe Rudy will lead off for Oakland, then Gene Tennis and Angel Manguel. The A's with one hit only. Say tomorrow night, Catfish Hunter tries for his 16th victory of the year. Is that right, or is it 17? Tries for number 17 tomorrow night. Catfish already has 16. Tomorrow night at 8 o'clock against Pat Thompson of the New York Yankees. Everybody gets in for half price. We do recommend you get here early. You can buy tickets for tomorrow night only here at the Oakland Coliseum during the day tomorrow. But you can get them anytime from 9 in the morning right up until game time tomorrow night. Gates will be open early here tomorrow night. So plan to come out and see Major League Baseball at half price on family night. The A's and the New York Yankees tomorrow night. It's one of four remaining family nights the A's have in their new expanded family night schedule. Here's Joe Rudy. Guy out center field his first time up. Rudy takes a fastball from Marichal. He just hits it outside corner. I'll tell you, he's carving that plate up in little bitty pieces today. Tremendous control he has. The help for the A's that they're being able to see him here. If these two teams do meet in the playoffs, it'd be tough to go against a guy like this you had never seen before in a playoff. Here's the 0-1 to Rudy. Sidearm fastball misses way outside. It goes to the backstop. In the PGA Golf Tournament today, Lee Trevino leads Jack Nicklaus by two strokes with three holes to go. That would have been a, a twosome to watch today. They're playing head up in the final. Nicklaus was trailing by one stroke going into the final 18 holes. 1-1 one, one to Rudy. Sidearm curveball fouled off. Joe had a real good swing at that pitch. It hung right in there for him. And he just got under it enough to foul it off here. It is one ball, two strikes. Now we've got this new dinger up here today. We'd like to let that thing go. We can't do it unless we get a home run. One ball, two strikes to Rudy. Low and outside. You know, you see the body motion that Marischal uses and transpose that into a controlled pitcher, and it's hard to imagine that a guy could get his body into that kind of shape and still throw the ball real close to where he wants to throw it most of the time. There's a pitch that almost hit Joe Rudy. He dropped down sidearm, and Joe didn't pick that one up. That was right in there on him. So Marischal is at a three ball, two strike count. He was that on Sal Bendo. He's not walked anybody in the game. He struck out four, including Jackson twice. North one and green one. He's had a better fastball today, I think, than most people figured he might have. Here's his payoff to Joe. Line drive, right center field. That's a base hit. Miller over to pick it up on the hop. And Joe Rudy holds on with a leadoff single to right center. Joe goes into every day's action saying, I want to get at least one hit today. I get a hit a day, and you keep out of those slumps. And there's his hit for today. There haven't been many days when he hasn't had a hit in a day. In 84 games of the A's first 116, he's had at least one hit. Here's Gene Tennis now, the A's catcher with nobody out. Runner at first base, and Rudy's almost standing on the bag. Here's a pitch. Strike called. A sidearm fastball. Let her high to Gino. Red Sox lead the A's one to nothing. We're in the last half of the fifth inning. One pitch. Check swing. Bouncer fair right in front of the plate. They throw to second base in the dirt for one over to first double play. Why, well, I tell you this, things are going right when that happens. Gene Tennis tried to get out of the way of an inside fastball. The ball bounced right out in front of the plate. The young catcher, Blackwell, got it through to second base, and he threw it in the dirt. But Griffin dug it out for the force on Joe Rudy, and then over to first, it was an easy double play. Boy, that is, that is what you call terrible luck right there. Now here's Angel Manguel with two out and nobody on. 
Angel takes the breaking ball of the dirt. Ball one. Oh, that one couldn't have gone foul. Here's Marischal's 1-0. and oh. Ground ball foul off third. Boston 1 and Oakland nothing. Whoa, what a big play that one turned out to be right there. Lead off single in two different innings, and the man has never reached second base yet, except for a Lou on a, an error on a ball in right field. Had a Lou had good speed, he could have gotten three on that one. Marshall to Manguel missed it outside. Doing one that count. Side arm curveball hit on the ground. Two big hops right to Rick Burleson, the shortstop of the Red Sox, and Marichal is continuing his dominance over the A's. Through five innings, Oakland's had only two hits, and the score is Boston 1, Oakland nothing. Here's Tim Blackwell, the catcher for the Boston Red Sox, against Glenn Abbott as we start the sixth inning. First pitch of the strike in the outside corner. Abbott's walked only one. Marichal hasn't walked anybody yet. This is a fast-moving ball game. Only four hits in the game, two by each team. There's another strike, same place as the last one. Knee-high fastball on the outside corner. Abby ahead of the batter throws, and it's a little wider this time. It's missing outside. One ball, two strikes. Benicus and Cooper will also bat here in the inning. The ball hit on the ground to left field. Just out of the reach of a diving foul bando. Blackwell starts the Red Sox rolling here in the sixth with an off-field ground ball base hit. All right. It's their third yeah. hit of the game. Abby couldn't make a better pitch than he made right then. Benica squares around. Big curve outside. Gets away from Gino, but not very far. The runner holds on. Benica squared around as if he were going to bunt. Well, the Phillies and the Cardinals both lost today in the Eastern Division of the National League. Well, that side battle goes on. Abbott to the plate. Benica swings. Bouncing ball. Back past the mound. Maxfield has only one play. That's the first. He got him. Benica's trying to get out of the way of a ball, and it hit his bat and rolled past the mound. But he managed to move his man up. So that's just as good as a sacrifice. One down, and here's Cecil Cooper. They have Cooper and Petroselli now to try to knock in another run for the Red Sox. They got a man at second base in the first inning, and Glenn Abbott got Petroselli to pop up and Yastrzemski to ground out. He got a man at second in the second inning, but Griffin knocked him home with a single. This is their first man since that time. Abbott had retired 11 in a row. Fly ball hit in the air, right out behind second. Dick Green is calling for it. Shading his eyes from the sun with his glove. He's got it, and there are two down. Now here's Petroselli. Score is Boston 1, Oakland nothing. Hey, we had some nice fans from out in Hayward bring us a big sack of fresh pears up here today. Ted Hibbert. That he grew them right out in his own backyard. Never saw red pears before. Thought they are yellow. <laughs> Not in Hayward. <laughs> Petroselli cocks the bat. Here's the pitch. Outside a ball. Got just a kiss of sunshine on them. They got a little suntan there. <laughs> exactly. Sunshine City. Abbott at the belt firing away, and he's just missing outside. Ball two to Petroselli. Well, we hope Chet Hendricks is having a good time here today. The A's got to get a rally going here sometime. 2-0 to Petro. Ball three. Abby's really trying to keep that ball away from this man who's a full hitter. But Carl Yastrzemski's on deck. And he's a 300 hitter. As is Petroselli. Here's ball four. So now they're two on for Carl Yastrzemski of the Red Sox. 
So in the second walk, Abbott's given up. He didn't act too anxious to pick the Petro there. He's gotten Yaz on two ground outs in a row. John Odom gets up in the Oakland bullpen. Here's a pitch. Ground ball right to the shortstop. Now Maxfield's got it. He has no play at second. Green is playing too deep. He goes to first for the out. So Glenn Abbott didn't want to pitch to Petroselli, looked like, and went right out. Yastrzemski and got him when the first pitch to ground out. So the Red Sox leaves two men on in the middle of the sixth inning. It is still 1-0 Boston. <laughs> Last half of inning number six. Boxers come out of their corners. Come on, John, don't ring that thing. Now we can't ring it until we get a home run. I'm impatient. I can't wait any longer. Dick Green struck out his first time up against Juan Marichal. Billy North got a single in the first inning, and Joe Rudy a single in the fifth. They were both the start inning. But North got picked off, and Joe Rudy ended up into a double play on a check swing. So Marichal has not really had a crisis as yet. He did have a runner at second base, and had to get Bando and Jackson to keep his tie. He got both of them with no sweat. Bando popped up, Jackson struck out. I'll tell you, with these two supposedly washed up pitchers on this Boston Red Sox ball club, Luis Dion at one time was given his release and sent back to the minors by a major league team, and now he's come back to be a top winner two years in a row. And Marichal, he could be resurrected here. The Red Sox really could run away with that East and be awfully tough in the playoffs. There's a slow curveball in there for a call strike to Dick Green. One high leg kick throws. Green, he throws his pan at the ball and hits a weak ground ball to the second baseman, Doug Griffin, who throws him out. One out. With the similarity, are kind of frightening there now that you bring it up. Marichal has had only one good year since 1969 at pneumonia after they went to Japan in 1970 and bad reaction to penicillin and... After 1971, he's never had another good year. Deion's pretty much the same story. He had a few bad years, and now he's almost unbeatable. Here's Dow Maxville now. Max hit a fly ball to center field in the third inning. Pitch low and outside a ball. One old pitch. That's outside. Two balls, no strikes. Ferguson Jenkins pitched a shutout, one nothing ball game against the A's down in Texas the other night. John Odom was a victim in that one. Go two pitch, high fly ball, center field. Rick Miller moves over as the sun shades down, cocks his eyes, he almost lost that one. Made the catch. Two down, and here's Billy North. I'll tell you the truth, fans, yesterday's game was a lot more fun. Had a little hitting going on in that one. 18 hits in yesterday's game. That's my kind of game. Here's a pitch to North. Swinging strike, that ball fell right off the end of the table, down and away from him. That had to be the screw ball or fork ball, wherever it is he throws. But he's had a good one today to the left-handed batter. Oh, one pitch. Bad ball, bunny, third base side. Petroselli's really playing him close this time and throws him out. It's no contest. Three up, three down after six innings of play. The A's are helpless so far against the Dominican dandy Juan Marichal. After six innings, the score is one to nothing, Boston. Hitting number seven now, Glenn Abbott. Probably wondering right now what it takes. He pitched a tremendous game in Minnesota last time out on Sunday of last week. Didn't walk a man, gave up only seven hits to a very hard-hitting ball club and only two runs, and yet he lost two to one. Now he's trailing one to nothing. He's given up only three hits. Here's Dwight Evans to lead it off against him. Big curveball outside, ball one. Evans is 0 for 2. Red Sox got a single in the first, a single in the second, and a single in the sixth. And that is it as far as their hit production against Glenn Abbott. But they also got a run out of that. 1-0 pitch. There's a changeup curve for a strike on the outside, 1-1. One one. 
Red Sox got a walk, a stolen base, and then a base hit by Doug Griffin. To bring Rick Miller home after he'd gotten on there and done performed some daring doing the bases, and that's the only run of the game. 1-1 one, one pitch, high pop-up, right side of the infield, drifting out into short right field. Green is going out, Jackson comes in, and it's Reggie to pull the catch, and the out. Right now, let's pause for station identification. You're listening to the World Champion A's and the Golden Pacific Sports Network. <laughs> One is out now, and Rick Miller, he's the only man who scored a run in this game, takes a strike in the outside at 2-1. Second inning looks harmless enough with one down. Miller drew a walk from Abbott. One of only two walks that Abby has thrown in his last two starts. But this one has cost him a run, and right now has him behind by a run, one to nothing. Abbott winds and delivers 0-1. Miller shortened up to bunt on that one, but took it for a strike. It's 0 2. Say, Miller is one of the real good defensive outfielders in the Red Sox ball club. But he's really had some trouble with that sunshine in center field today. Two strike pitch. Swing and a foul ball off to the left. Out of play. 0 2 the count. Giants at Chicago won their first game today 5 to 3. And after five and a half innings of the second game, they're tied with the Cubs two and two. Kingman and Maddox have hit home runs in that second game for the Giants two runs. Bonds and Matthews had home runs in the first game. Two strike pitch. Miller swings and misses. He struck him out. Abbott gets his first strike out of the game right there. Two down and nobody on and Doug Griffin the batter. He has been the villain. As far as the A's are concerned, a base hit here, a blooper out over shortstop. Drove home the game's only run. He had hit his last three times up yesterday. None of them hit very hard. Pitch to him. There's a shot. Base hit left field. So Doug Griffin has his fifth base hit in the last two games and his sixth hit of the series. And he's never batted higher than seventh in the order. This is the only game he's even batted that high. Right. Look back at his short career in the American League, though. He has worn open pitching out ever since he's been in this league. Well, he's done it in this series with every kind of a base hit, from that line shot there to bloopers over the heads of infielders to balls lost in the sunshine. The bouncers have all fallen in for him. Two down and Burles to the batter. He's 0 for 2 in the game. There's a lot toss to first by Abbott, going back in his Griffin safely. John Odom and Daryl Bowles get up in the eighth bullpen. Abbott set, checks first and delivers. High drive to left field. Fairly deep. Looks like it's playable. Angel Mongual trots over there. Makes the catch for the out. No run. One hit. No errors. One man left on. Seventh inning stretch time in the Coliseum comes with the A's trailing. One to nothing. One notch out. Out to pitch the seventh inning. Marichal won seven shutout innings his last start, allowing just two hits. And in his relief appearance before that, he went six shutout innings, retiring 17 of the last 18 batters he faced. So Marichal has now thrown some 19 consecutive shutout innings since coming off the disabled list. Has two victories. The A's have only two hits against him. He's given up only six hits in those 19 innings. Today, he's given up two hits, has not walked anybody, and struck out four. The A's are trying to give him their best shot here in the seventh inning. A two to lose. Sal Bando and Reggie Jackson. Alou. Round base man and then a couple of power hitters. A Zeus has been on once in the game. Now it's out of the plate. There's a slow breaking curveball for a strike. It's on one. Up around the letters. Well, Malachal has been an artist here today. Here's his windup. The one strike pitch to a loo. Outside, he misses ball one. One and one.
Daryl Knowles continues to heat up in the A's bullpen. Paul Lindblad gets up. Mike starts throwing here. Looks like he's just kind of watching over things down there right now. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swung on. There's a drive left field line. If it's fair, it's trouble. Maybe. Going over forward and just drifting into foul ground as Fanicus to make the catch. Well, that one really carried well down that left field line. But still fell about 15, 20 feet short of the wall. And Vanikas got over to make the catch. So Alou is retired, one down, and Sal Bando the batter. Sal is grounded out hard to third and flight out the very shallow left center field of Rick Miller. He's over for two. Red G. Jackson is on deck. Wouldn't take much for the A's here. They're only down one to nothing. Marichal to the plate. Misses outside, ball one. Marichal has only missed badly with two or three pitches here today. 1-0 pitch to Bando. Let up outside. Misses. Ball two. Bando has a look at Bobby Winkle. 2-0 to Sal. Red G. Jackson remains on deck. The A's have had only two hits. Both singles. One a bunt single. Another one a base hit. Hit to right center field by Joe Rudy. Solidly hit. 2-0 to Bando. Marichal. Kicks high the 2-0 pitch. There's a drive to left center field. Going over is Benica, and he makes the catch out number two. Bando didn't really hit it hard at all, just got it up in the air out there in a routine play for Benicus. Two are down, and Reggie Jackson has struck out twice. Have a rabid baseball fan from Mazatlan, Mexico here today. Send a welcome to Rico Aramburo. Tell us his big baseball fan from Mazatlan. And he is visiting his nieces in Manteca. And they brought him out to a ball game here today. Fixed it, Reggie. There's the screwball outside, ball one. Lee Trevino has just won the PGA, we understand, by one stroke over Jack Nicklaus. 1-0 pitch to Reggie. Outside corner, first strike of beauty. One and one. Marichal working quickly. Wines and delivers one and one. Swinging strike, and the bottom fell out of that one again. Must be the fourth ball. Wow. Reggie hasn't hit anything all day long. Lifted a foul ball over the A's dugout. That's been about it. Marichal winds and delivers one and two. Swung on a shot to second. Knocked down by Griffin, but he'll not get Reggie. Base hit. Well, Reggie finally hit that one, and he really cracked it. Doug Griffin fell over trying to knock it down. The ball hit his glove and bounced out back towards the infield. And Griffin went after it, but had no chance to get Reggie. So with two down now, the A's get a base runner, their third hit of the game. And the batter will be Joe Rudy. Rudy has been one of the few A's to really make solid contact for a base hit against Marichal. Fly ball to right center field that fell in. Joe, been in a hot streak of late. Batting average is 311. Just three home runs in his last four games. That's 14 for the year and 73 RBIs. Jackson at first and two down. It's one to nothing. The Red Sox with Marichal on the mound half the lead. One, the little bit right on a hit 10 miles foul. Oh, Rudy was way out in front of that side on curve ball, but hit it foul. All in one to Joe. Marichal gets the new ball, goes off the mound, erupts it up. One helped the Giants win a division title in 1971, winning 18 games but then suffered through his worst season ever in 1972 as he had back trouble all year. Then was 11 and 15 last year. Here's his stretch. Looks at Jackson. Reggie leans away from first. The high kick over the top is swinging a foul ball off the third baseline. 0-2 to Rudy. Red Sox left fielder Benicus plays Rudy straight away, even toward the line a bit. Center fielder Miller, however, is over 10 feet or so toward right field. And the right fielder, Evans, he is also leaning a bit towards the, the foul line also. 
Big gaping hole for Rudy up the alley to left center field. He hit one there. Reggie would score easily from first base. Marshall kept the ball away from Rudy here in the first two pitches. But tried to in the first one, but got it over the plate, and Rudy really crashed it, but foul. Now the two strike set by Marichal, but instead of going home, he fires over to first base, and Jackson is back. Reggie's only the fourth base runner of the game for the A's, and one of those men was picked off. And another one was erased in a double play. Now Marichal delivers on two. Strike three, call on the inside corner. So Rudy is caught looking, and Juan Marichal is, has gone through another shutout inning here. No runs, one hit, and one man left on. Now they've gone through seven, and the Red Sox lead one to nothing. Well, we go to the top half of the eighth inning. Uh, frankly, a rather boring baseball game here this afternoon, if you don't uh, like the low-scoring affairs. But it could get pretty exciting before it's all over. We are one nothing Boston over Oakland as of right now. Here's Blackwell. He got a base hit to left field his last time up. First pitcher to call strike on the outside corner. Blackwell, Benicas, and Cooper will bat for the Red Sox as Glenn Abbott has done another sterling job out of that mound so far today. Holding the Red Sox to one run. Red Sox have Dick Drago throwing in their bullpen. Here's the pitch. Just outside the ball. Marshall has not gone beyond this any game this year. He started five games, has not pitched a complete game. Coming into today, he's given up 42 hits in 40 innings. Here's the pitch. Line drive, left field, base hit. So Blackwell starts off another Boston inning with another single to left. He is two for three today. And back to Juan Benitez, who has had one of the base hits so far. Doug Griffin has had two hits for the Red Sox. Blackwell, two. And Benitez, one. They've all been singles. The A's have had only three. Tommy Harper goes in to run now for Blackwell. Tommy Harper, who leads the Red Sox in stolen bases with 24. He's a good candidate to be going right here. And Alvin Dark is going to the mound. He might bring in Darrell Knowles right here. He's going to do just that. Alvin Dark, with Tommy Harper on, is going to bring in Darrell Knowles right here. And the big reason, of course, is hoping that Darrell can hold the runner close over there. I'll tell you, Glenn Abbott couldn't pitch any better baseball than he pitched for seven innings today much. He did walk the man that scores a run. And here's a great round of applause for the big guy as he comes off the field. Well, big Glenn Abbott has to be wondering inside a little bit right now as he's pitched two tremendous games back them up together and last week in Minnesota which we talked about already where he went the distance didn't walk anybody in that ball game and gave up only two runs and seven hits to one of the best hitting teams in the league in their home ballpark now against the Boston Red Sox who scored more runs than anybody else in the American League this year save the Oakland A's he held the mighty Red Sox to only one run on five hits and seven plus innings and yet, he cannot win this ball game. The only decision that he could possibly get out of it is a loss, despite the fact that he gave up only one run. But Darrell Knowles comes on now. Darrell certainly has one of the best pickoff moves around. As the Red Sox use their own version of a Herb Washington here, Tommy Harper, not playing in this ball game, but now he comes in a situation where they'd like to see him get that stolen base. Knowles comes on to face Benitez. He's set to go. Darrell worked as a starting pitcher four days ago. Out of the waist, he's going to the plate. There's a drive deep center field. Hurry back, Billy North. He's going to the warning track, reaches up over his head, makes the catch. Great running catch by North. 
going straight away, and Harper has to hold on at first base. Boy, now there's a fine catch. Billy North wasn't gliding going back after that ball. He turned and ran and got there and made the catch. So Benicas had a hammering cut at Darrell Knowles' very first pitch. Now here is Cecil Cooper, a left-handed batter, up, and Sal Bando's talking to Darrell. Darrell got the victory in that start four days ago down in Texas, going five innings, giving up one run and five hits. Walked three, struck out one in that outing. It was his first start after 32 jobs as a reliever. And not very many of them in July. Only got into four or five games, four games in the whole month of July. Harper off first, not a very big lead. Darrell throws over there. Tommy has 24 stolen bases. He led the American League in steals last year, and he led them also the year they were in Seattle, and he was with that ball club. Another throw to first by Darrell. Harper's back. Left-handed batting Cecil Cooper, the DH up, and since he's still up there, you might expect that they could be bunting here. Raleigh Fingers is getting ready for the right-hand hitters. Here's the pitch. Cooper swinging away. Hits a fly ball to left. Angel lost it in the sun. He's going over now, and he can't find it. It falls in there for a base hit. Harper's going to score easily on the play, and Cooper goes to second base. Now the throw in from the outfield. Noel picks it up, backing up, throwing the bando. They're going to get Cooper at third. He's out there. Now Maxfield's throw from out in left field in a relay from Angel Manguel came into the plate area. And it hit the runner, Tommy Harper, in the back. But Darrell Knowles was backing the play up, picked it up, and threw the ball down to Sal Bando. And Angel Manguel is calling for help out in left field. He might have turned an ankle or something there. Say he turned something or other. That was a funny-looking route he took after that fly ball that dropped right at his feet. So the sunshine again. Boots an Oakland A's outfielder, and Angel Manguel appears to be hurt on the play. Boy, Tommy Harper really made sure that Gene Tennis had no chance to go after that ball. Good thing Darrell was back there because Harper, with Gino right on the back there, the relay came in from Dow Maxwell in short left field, and Harper had already crossed the plate to throw a bounce in the dirt and hit Harper just as Harper hit Gino, and then the ball bounced away, and Harper just sprawled all over Gene Tennis out there, and the two of them were just lying on the ground, and the ball rolled away. Unfortunately, Darrell Knowles is there and was able to pick it up. Well, Angel Mangual is hurt seriously enough here that he's going to leave the ball game. They've escorted him into the A's dugout, and Claudel Washington has gotten up now looking for a glove here, and trainer Joe Romo is going to help Angel, and they'll walk into the A's clubhouse here, and Angel limping. Looks like he turned an ankle or something out there, so Claudel Washington will go in here. But a big run there for the Boston Red Sox, and now they lead by a score of 2 to nothing. Oh, Angel is not even in the Sun Field here. Sun Field has been sort of center and right. He came, he went back on that ball, and then he came in. And then he started circling and ended up chasing it to his right, and a ball fell right down in front of him at his feet. Fair by about two feet. Now they're going to give Fardell Washington a few minutes to get his arm in shape here. Dick Drago continues to throw out of the Boston bullpen. Might be between start throwing. I don't know. They want to make sure Marshall hasn't been this far, that they've got somebody ready, I guess, in case he runs into trouble. But, boy, that run was a big one right there. Cooper had a very weak swing at a Darrell Knowles slider. He had a short pop fly ball in the left field, and once again, an A's outfielder lost the ball. Well, I don't know if it is that tough in left field as it is in center. Angel looked like he was really fighting another fly ball hit to him earlier in the ball game. It really took a strange round to that one, kind of a half circle, starting in and then circling around and then going back and over. Here's Rico Petroselli now. Nobody on and two down. The pitch to him is strike call. Here's the 0 1 pitch. That one got all the way to the backstop. The Red Sox lead now 2 0 with Juan Marichal pitching a three hitter so far at the A's. A's. 1 1 pitch. 
Bouncing ball, a bando off his chest. He keeps it in front of him, picks it up, and throws him out. The Red Sox score a run here in the eighth inning. They had two base hits and didn't leave anybody on. The score now going to the last of the eighth, 2 nothing Boston. Juan Marichal is pitching now into the last half of inning number eight. Gene Tennis will lead off, and then Quadell Washington and Dick Green. So the A's need two runs to tie it up here and keep it going. Don't count them out. They've been a good late-inning ball club. So far, Marichal did all the best of it. Gene Tennis got robbed of a swing back in the fifth inning, trying to get out of the way of an inside pitch. Hit the bat roll right out in front of the plate. Bob Montgomery is the new catcher for the Boston Red Sox now. Gene Tennis is up. The A's, as far as hitting the ball today, have hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven balls to the outfield. Is all. The pitch to Gino. Breaking ball low and away. Ball one. 14,291 here today. One old pitch. Slow curve. High. Ball two. Now they have Diego Segui and Bob Beal throwing out of the Boston bullpen. They're their late inning relievers. 2-0 to tennis, fastball, low, ball three. Hang on, the A's are usually good for getting something stirred up in the late inning. Marischal's going to make you earn it ordinarily. Gino, the walking his man in the league, has a 3-0 count. There's ball four. Well, the pitchers of the league had a hard time throwing strikes to Geno this year. That 83 walks or so he's had, the first one Marichal's given up. And now here's the imperturbable rookie, Bardell Washington. Bardell batting 270. The Red Sox stopped him yesterday, went 0 for 4. Batting where Angel Manguel would have been in coming up. Well, we hope Angel's not hurt badly. He, to me, like he grabbed the back of his leg. When the trainer came out. Marichal's pitch. Strike call on the outside corner. Bardell standing a long ways away from that plate. He's really giving him a lot of the outside corner. Off the stretch, Marichal holding on, throwing. In the dirt, looks like the fork ball or screw ball. I think he must be just turning that ball over. One and one count. Bardell fouls this pitch back at strike two. Notice in the Red Sox bullpen crew, the key a right-hander, feel a left-hander. Ordinarily, when they have that in the bullpen, the left-hander will get over on the left side of the mound, the right-hander on the other side, so their arms won't come close together. But these guys, ever since they've been in town, every time they get up, they get just the opposite direction. One and two pitch to the rookie. Swinging strike three. Wait a minute, he foul tipped the ball. Claudel started back to the dugout. And the catcher didn't hold on, and he's coming back for another try. Tomfair had to talk him into coming back. He thought he'd struck out. Hang in there, Rook. One and two count with tennis at first base. There's the pitch. He struck him out. Boy, he missed that one about a foot and a half. He was definitely overmatched. Threw him a fork ball about a foot and a half outside or more, and Fardell didn't come close. So there's one out in the eighth inning. That's six strikeouts for Marichal, and the batter now is Dick Green. Pitch to the plate. Dick takes it low and outside. Ball one. First time we saw the Red Sox, the first two series, all the A's players were unanimously saying the Red Sox were the best-looking ball club we'd seen up to that time. And through all their injuries and everything, they have held right up there. Green takes a fastball just missing outside. It didn't miss by much. 2-0 count. Red Sox have won five games less than the A's and have lost three more than the A's. Both lead their division. 
to old Pitcher Green. Fouled off. Oh, he got a good pitch and a good swing at it. A letter high fastball. I believe Marichal thought he might have been taking then, and he really grooved one. And Dick fouled it off. Here's the next pitch. High fly ball, deep left center field, but Miller's going over and getting under it. He makes the catch. There are two down in the eighth inning. The batter now is scheduled to be down. Maxfield will have a pinch hitter. Pat Burke comes on to bat. So Pat Burke brings the bat to the plate as a pinch hitter for Oakland now. Burke for the season is batting 226 for A's. The A's, he's been up 93 times, has 21 base hits. Got one home run for the season and 40 or 14 runs batted in. Struck out 20 times, walked 15 times. They're hitting for shortstop, of the 38, Pat Burke. Red Sox having a little conference now about Pat Burke with Juan Marichal. Two of the old pros of the National League the last week have really quieted the A's bats with a bunch of off-speed pitching and control pitching. Ferguson Jenkins in Texas the other night and now Marichal today. Burke got in there and Marichal was about ready to throw it. See what that other run did. With Gene Tennis getting the leadoff walk, it took him out of the bunt situation and meant they had to start swinging. The fork ball down and away for ball one. A lost fly ball in the sun or something like that down the left field line gave Boston a big run. Burke swings and fouls one right off the end of the bat. He got another one of those fork balls breaking down and away. Red Sox two and the A's nothing. Kansas City's already won today. Got one and one on Burke. Marish out of the plate. Fork ball again. Falls away. Ball two. He's thrown him three straight. Calling that a fork ball, not knowing exactly what it is, but it's reacting like that. Two on pitch. Slow curve turned the other way this time, and Burke took a look at it too. It cost him a strike. It's two and two. Uh, it just looks like he's not wanting to throw Pat Burke a fastball. Here's a two two pitch. Check swing bouncer. Foul ball to the third base side. That almost went fair. Burke wasn't trying to swing at that one, but it hit the bat. 2-2 two, two count. Angel Manguala that he suffered a slight hamstring pull in the right leg. The 2-2 pitch to Burt. Swing a bouncing ball. Right side. Picked up by the second baseman Griffin. He throws the first for the out. Marichal covering. Doug Griffin got over there. Down the line. Picked up that ball. Threw Pat Burke out with Marichal covering. And the A's go to the ninth inning trailing. Two to nothing. We go to the top half of the ninth inning now, and leading off for the Boston Red Sox will be Carl Yastrzemski. Dwight Evans and Rick Miller will follow against Darrell Knowles. Glenn Abbott pitched seven super innings here today. Gave up only two runs. One of those shouldn't have scored. It scored after he left. A uh, ball that should have been caught. 
Darius Strimsky is up. Ran handled him very well today. He went 0 for 3. Here's Knowles winding and pitching. Yes, Trimsky takes a slider for a call strike. No one pitch. Curve outside the ball. The ball in the dirt. Two balls, one strike. Winds up and throws, and it is low for ball three. Ball four. Carl Yastrzemski gets the leadoff walk here in the ninth inning, and I believe that'll be all for Darrell. Raleigh Fingers has already been signaled in here. Probably all that Alvin Dark wanted. Darrell to do anyway was to get that one left-handed batter, and he didn't come close to the strike. So in the ninth inning, Raleigh Fingers comes out of the bullpen, and he is a third A's pitcher of the game. Boston is leading 2 nothing as he comes in here with the man on and nobody out. Raleigh comes into a ball game this year for the 52nd time. He's won seven and saved 13 games this year. And Raleigh continues to be in a very hot streak. It's extended now for about a month and a half since we got into the month of July. And Raleigh's earned run average has gone down by more than a full run. It was up about 360 down to 2.53 now. And he has those 13 saves. So he's figured in 20 of the A's victories this year in a very real way with a winner of saves. 78 in the third inning pitched overall by Raleigh, allowing 68 base hits and only 20 walks. And he is struck out 59, so he keeps that strike at the walk ratio just about right at 3 to 1. He's allowed only three home run balls this year. So Raleigh having himself another pretty good season. He's got a tough man to face right here, Dwight Evans. Big right-handed batter who's given the A's a lot of trouble in some very big situations this year for Boston. Red Sox ball club has quite a few of those guys. You look at the guys today who have driven home the run. Doug Griffin, a young second baseman, and Cecil Cooper, a rookie who's acting as a DH. So another one of those Red Sox young ball players. And that has generally been sign for trouble this year for the A's. Raleigh Fingers now pitching to Dwight Evans. Kremski takes the lead over at first base. Here's Raleigh's first pitch. Evans squares around to butt, but he doesn't. He takes a big breaking ball for strike one. Tennant's giving the sign again. Here's a pitch. Again, Evans squared around, but he took it low for a ball. It's one and one. Red Sox two and the A's nothing. There have been only nine base hits in the ball game. Evans is swinging this time if he likes it, but he didn't. It's a call strike on the outside corner. Good breaking ball. One and two the count. Again, the breaking ball. Swung on it, missed strike three. Evans chased the bat one then. What can happen when you get ahead of that batter? And Evans fell behind Raleigh, and he threw him a great big wide sweeping breaking ball, and Evans missed it badly. One out, here is Miller. He has walked, he's flying to left, and he struck out today. Scored a run for the Red Sox in the second inning. Got a big stolen base right ahead of a Doug Griffin single. Fingers misses inside, ball one.
James will have the top of the batting order coming up in the last of the ninth inning. There goes Yastrzemski. The pitch is swung on and missed. Geno's throw to second is perfect. And Yastrzemski is out by plenty. Perfect strike by Gene Tennis down to Dick Green, and they got Carl Yastrzemski. So Gino's thrown out two out of three stealing here today. Matter swung at the pitch and missed. Oh, that throw was about 18 inches high, right straight on the sack at second base. Here's a one-on-one -on -one now. Strike two call. Tennis through Griffin out in the second inning on a pitch out. He got the Ostrinsky then on a swinging strike. And he just missed Miller because he had a tough pitch to handle in the second inning. He had to reach down into his right to get it. Curve swinging strike three, and we go to the last half of the ninth inning. And if the A's are to do it today, they got to do it right now. The score is Boston 2, Oakland nothing. Fans, we invite you to stay tuned after the broadcast of A's baseball today for our head and home show. We'll feature an interview with one of the stars of the game here today. And we'll also run down the complete scoreboard of Major League Baseball today and tonight and take a look at the standings at the end of this day as we're just about halfway through the month of August. Juan Marichal, eight strong innings here today, shutting out the Oakland A's on only three hits. And it looks like Juan is out of here. In fact, he is. Diego Segui has been warming up the last couple of innings has brought his jacket with him from the bullpen. He's walking in right now. And so the Red Sox getting eight innings of shutout, three-hit baseball from Juan Marichal here tonight. We'll go to their ace right-hander out of the bullpen, Diego Segui, as we go to the ninth inning. Segui has been tough on the A's a couple of times this year. Overall, his statistics are not that impressive for a reliever. Five wins and four losses and a 3.80 earned run average. Segui has pitched 73 in the third innings and allowed 74 base hits and has walked 35. So he's been walking about one batter for every two innings of pitching. He does have 54 strikeouts. He's allowed five home run balls. So if Segui comes on, he can be tough. Big right-hander who does a lot with the baseball, just as Marichal does, probably throws harder than Marichal. So the A's will give it the last shot here in the ninth inning. We'll remind you now that tomorrow night, the A's will open up a three-game series with the New York Yankees. Bobby Mercer, Ron Bloomberg, Lou Piniella, Elliot Maddox, Thurman Munson, and all those fellas. The Yankees will throw three pretty good pitches at the A's. Pat Thompson tomorrow night against Jim Catfish Hunter. Hunter will try to get his 17th victory of the year in that ball game. Dobson will try to get his fourth consecutive victory over the A's this year. That's a family night game. Tickets available. All half price seats here in the Coliseum. Then on Tuesday, it's Holtzman for the A's against Doc Medich of the Yankees. Holtzman 12 and 12 or 12 and 13 and Medich is 13 and 10. And then on Wednesday, Vita Blue tries to get number 15 and he'll be opposed by left-hander Rudy May. Used to be with the Angels. He's a Bay Area product, and he's been red hot for the Yankees. Three night games, a family night tomorrow as the Yankees come to town. So Diego Segui on to try and nail it down for Juan Marichal, who has extended his scoreless streak now to 20 innings in a row. And he's allowed only seven hits since coming back from a 10-week layoff. And Juan has seldom been better than that. And the Red Sox certainly looking stronger and stronger with a fellow like that to add to that rotation. Money. All right, here's Billy Norris to start it off for the A's. Jesus, Salou, and Bando as they get that far, Reggie Jackson. So don't go away. The A's need only two. Billy Norris got a base hit in the first inning. A bunt single just to the left of the mound as we look at. The pitcher's right. And then Marichal picked him off, and that set the stage. And one didn't give up another hit until the fifth. But it's a different ball game now. Diego Segui is out there for the Red Sox, pitching to Norris. And the first pitch is high, a ball. Diego is much more likely to walk somebody than Juan Marichal. The has been with a lot of ball clubs. He's been with the Oakland A's two or three different times. Hard working guy, this fellow. Here's the one and oh pitch. Low ball two. So the count is two balls, no strike. Some of you probably have the take on right here. He kicks and throws. 
Ball three. You know Segee's going to have to throw at least a couple of strikes in a row here. Out comes the arm and a 3-0 delivery is a strike call. North throws the bat away and hits the first, but he's got to go back and get the bat. The umpire call it a strike. And if the next one is close, the umpire might call it a strike too. They don't like to have that kind of thing happen. Billy threw that bat away and headed off the first base. Plate umpire McCoy called him back. Said you got to do it some more. Drago and Beal getting hot in the bullpen for the Boston Red Sox. Crowd of 14,000 plus hanging on here, open for an exciting finish. Three and one pitch. Strike two call, no doubt where that one was. So now Segee's going to have to throw his third strike in a row or walk Billy North. He winds up, he throws. Foul ball back here. Oh, let's see if Segee can throw four in a row into the strike zone. If it's close, of course, Billy's going to have to swing. Segee reaches into the glove, comes out with the ball. Here's a 3-2 pitch. Bouncing ball left side of the infield. That's going to be a tough play. Petroselli's got it. Throwing the first. He throws it away. Billy North is going to go at least to second base. He is heading around second on his way to third. He's got it made. Nobody covering home. Finally, they get Petroselli in there, and Billy North is on. Rico Petroselli picked up a chopping ball hit by Billy North. It drilled a base hit and a two-base error on Petroselli. Oh, you can see how big that other run the Red Sox got was now. North is at third with nobody out, and here's Jesus Salou. Billy got jammed on that ball and just popped it down the third base line. Petroselli playing him a little deep with two strikes. Came in and picked it up and threw it by Carl Jastrzemski. When you throw it away here in this ballpark, you throw it away. Jesus Salou comes on now. The Red Sox infield is back. On a ground ball in the infield, they would give up a run here. They're leading by two. It could be very exciting if Alou gets on with Herb Washington down in the dugout. So Alou has gone 0 for 3 today. At the plate, Segui will work off the stretch with North at third, throwing to the plate. Foul ball back here, and Jesus went right down to his knees, swinging at that letter high fastball. Red Sox are back all the way around. Jesus Salou moving the bat back and forth, puts it up on his shoulder now. And asks for time as Segee takes a little too long. Foul band on Reggie Jackson down on deck and in the hole. The A's could pull this one out. It would be a mighty big one. One strike count to Alou. The pitch. Oh, he started to go for one over his head. Took it for a ball, one and one. Segui threw him high and tight. Jesus had to duck out of the way. He had started his swing and was able to stop it. Montgomery gives the sign to Segui. And the pitch. There's a drive left center field. It's hit very hard, but Miller makes the catch. North tags and comes in to score. Oh, baby, Alou really ripped that ball. He had a chance to go into the alley, but Rick Miller was playing him over there. It's a two-to-one ball game now. One out, nobody on, and here's Sal Pando. The A's have got to start it all over again. I tell you, Segui really got away with a bad pitch right then. So the A's are down by one now. Now Bando is up. He's 0 for 3 today. Here's the key pitch to him. High ball one. 
There aren't many clubs that would play Elu over there where they were playing him just then. Most everybody plays him in the right center field. Here's a 1-0 to Bando. Bouncing ball right up the middle. Center field, base hit. So the swing and A's are still alive. Bando's on at first base, and I imagine we'll see a pinch runner by the name of Hurricane Herb Washington. Here he comes. Washington, who has stolen 16 bases in his last 19 tries, is on at first base representing the tying run of the ball game. Now, the last time he ran for Bando, it was in Chicago in that two-to-one thriller the A's won over Wilbur Wood. Now, Diego Segui has got a very, very slow move to the plate. He has always been easy to run against. They may pitch out here with Washington over there. Herbie gets the lead to get out of the way. He turns and looks at Herb Washington, who's standing right off the bag, about a six or eight foot lead. Reggie Jackson is a batter. Fans yelling, go. Segee brings it down, throws the first. Looks like Diego's developed that jerky motion, bringing the ball down into the set position to resemble Luis Tiant's move. Herbie off first base. Here's a pitch. Strike call to Reggie Jackson, and Washington was holding on. One strike count on Reggie Jackson, one out in the ninth. He is down by a run. Now the right-hander is set. Here's the pitch. Strike two call. Reggie's taking two fastballs right down the middle, and Herb Washington hasn't gone yet. The key has a real good fork ball. And the success that Marischal had with it on Jackson today might induce him to throw it right here. Jackson standing with an 0-2 count. Here's a throw back to first. Herbie gets back on. With Jackson at the plate, he's got a chance to hit the extra base blow. And if he did, Washington could score, so he doesn't have to take the gamble of stealing. That's probably the reason he hasn't gone yet. The pitch to Reggie, taken high and outside of all, one and two. It's two to one Boston over the A's in the ninth inning. And as is the case, most of the time, the A's get something manufactured in that ninth. Got a ball on the outfield grass out and right out of the Boston bullpen. One ball, two strikes. Big hole to the left side of the infield for Reggie. The key takes his time to get his sign. Now he has it. Washington leaning off first base. He's going. Here's a pitch taken. Throw down a second base. He's going to be close. He's out. Herb Washington thrown out trying to steal. Bob Montgomery got a perfect pitch to handle that time, and Herbie didn't get that good a start off there. So Montgomery makes a mighty, mighty big throw to second base. The shortstop, Burleson, covering. He had stolen 16 out of his last 19 tries. And with Sagi out there, he's got a slow move. You'd think he had a good chance then. But he didn't make it. Montgomery put that throw right on the bag. Now it's up to Reggie with a 2-2 count. Nobody on and two out. The pitch on the way. Swing a little roller. Third base side. Petroselli's got it. Throwing to first base. He got him. The ball game is over. The A's lose. So Oakland gave it a shot. Their best shot they had here in the ninth inning. But it wasn't good enough. The Red Sox beat the A's by a score of 2-1. to one. Juan Marichal has been a forgotten man in the Boston Red Sox ball club. Most folks figured that Juan was probably gone for the season and maybe his career had ended. And yet today he comes out against the Oakland A's, the world champions of baseball, throws three or eight innings of three-hit baseball against the A's without allowing them a run. Marichal certainly has never been sharper than he was here today. He's now run his string of consecutive scoreless innings to 20 innings and coming off the disabled list after spending 10 weeks there and Juan making his debut in the Bay Area in an enemy uniform. Today it was the uniform of the Boston Red Sox. 
And Marichal certainly inspired memories of past glories with the San Francisco Giants for many fans here today. The final line score is two runs, six hits, two errors, and four left on for Boston. One run, five hits, no errors, and three left for the Oakland A's. And we must add to Glenn Abbott again today, pitched himself a very fine ball game, but the A's just couldn't get in the runs. He ran into a fella who was one up on him again. Another one-run loss for the A's to the Red Sox. The Boston takes the series two games out of three. Tomorrow night down at the Coliseum, it's family night here. Game time is 8 p.m., still plenty of seats available for it. Half price night. You better get him here at the Coliseum. That's the only place to get him. Get him early. Make sure you have a good seat when you come to the ballpark tomorrow night. Jim Catfish Hunter is after his 17th victory against Pat Dobson, who's 10 and 13, but he's beaten the A's three consecutive times this year. Red Sox got to run early on a walk to Rick Miller, and he stole second, and Griffin singled him home. And then they, as it turned out, the game-winning run scored in the eighth inning as Blackwell had singled the lead off. Harper ran for him, and then with one down, Angel Mangual lost a fly ball, whether it was in the sun or he misjudged it, we do not know at this point. It went as a double for Cecil Cooper, and Harper, as a pinch runner, was able to score, and as it turned out, that may have been one of the key plays of the game. On the other hand, Bob Montgomery threw out Herb Washington, who represented the tying run in the ninth inning, and certainly, if not the key play, it was the one that broke the A's back. Now let's go down to Monty Moore and his special guest, Boston catcher Bob Montgomery. Okay, John, thank you very much. Juan Marichal is in the ice bucket in there in the training room of the Boston Red Sox, and I don't know whether it's to cool him off or just to preserve his arm, but Bob Montgomery was in there to catch one of the innings today. He caught seven innings of one the other night in Milwaukee, and he's got quite a streak going, Bob. You fellows just got to be awfully proud to have him back in action. Well, we really are, uh, Monty. I, I'm especially uh, thrilled over his control that he's displayed in the two times that... Uh, uh, that I've caught him in the last two times, and uh, it, it's really hard for me to, to believe that his control can be that sharp after such a long layoff. Some of our uh, people were commenting that they had seen Juan last year with the Giants a little bit, and it looked like he might even with that playoff or uh, layoff then throwing the ball a little harder. How do you think? Well, I think that he's throwing the ball a little bit harder now than he was in the first first part of the season when he tried to throw a couple times, and uh, they ran him out for a couple of starts, and I didn't think he threw the ball uh, anywhere nearly as good as he's throwing it now. What was the pitch he's throwing? Was that a fork ball he throws that he was getting Jackson on and going down and away the left-hand batter? No, that's a screw ball that he throws, and he's been famous for that, I guess, for years when he's with the Giants. I don't know. I've never been in the National League. I never saw him pitch. Thank goodness I didn't have to hit off. <laughs> don't you imagine that's part of his success that these American League hitters haven't seen very much of him, and that should make him even more valuable to you guys? Well, I'm sure, I'm sure that uh, that has a great deal to do with it because he does have a, a certainly a little bit of a, a different delivery to the plate with the big high kick and uh, as far as I know there's not another guy in the in the American League uh, that even come close to him probably the closest guy would be Palmer with any kind of kick uh, like that and I think Palmer's even shortened his down some now so it, it's a little bit different to look at the guy uh, throw his leg up there and especially when he's throwing you a few off-speed pitches and then he throws you the fastball it makes the fastball look a little more effective. Bob is he uh uh, we talk about control. He's got to be as good a control pitcher probably as anybody ever caught, sort of like the Jim Hunter of our staff who throws more pitches. Well, uh, yeah, Teon's also a, uh, a plate man, as I like to call him. If they throw a pitch, it's going to be within an inch or two of the plate. And uh, these guys, believe me, uh, you catch them, you could catch them for days and days and never get tired because you sit up behind the plate and that ball is going to be thrown just... Uh, just about where you're sitting. Is he not the same kind of a pitcher as Marichal without the big leg kick, but with a lot of other gyrations you don't see much? Pretty much so. He gives you the uh, he gives you his back a lot of times to the hitter before he delivers, and he throws it sidearm, he throws it over the top, he throws it three quarters, pretty much the way Marichal does. I think Louis perhaps uh, has a little more velocity on his fastball than Juan does, but Louis uh, does primarily the same thing. He throws you some off-speed stuff, and it's in and out, and all of a sudden, zip, here's the fastball, and you're just not ready to handle it. A lot of people I know are asking why Marichal went out of the game after eight innings today, and uh, Diego Segui came in and wound up a shutout. It looked for a while as if it might be a disastrous move, but why do you think it was made? Well, I think uh, probably to preserve a little bit uh, in his arm. Uh, he hasn't been pitching that much, and he hasn't gone nine innings uh, any time that I know of. He came in relief uh, the other day, or about two weeks ago in Boston, after Wise had pitched the first four. Uh, Juan finished up that game, and then the other night in Milwaukee, he pitched uh, a good, strong seven innings, and Diego came in and picked him up again, and then today they got eight innings out of him. So maybe the next time he starts, or the next two times they start, if he's uh, in a comfortable situation in a ball game and he's still fitting all right, they'll probably let him go the, uh, the full route if he can. Now, Bob, another big play came about in the ninth inning when the A's had already scored one run, and 
Now, all of a sudden, Bando's on, and Herb Washington takes his place, and the catcher has got to be on the spot, the lack of which you don't get on the spot very often in baseball, because with a pinch running specialist, you know at some time in the next few pitches, Herb Washington's going to go. I was surprised. I thought maybe he might try to go a little bit before uh, we got the two strikes on Reggie, but then again, you got to look at it, and you say, well, here's Reggie, who's got 21 home runs on your ball club, and uh, he's certainly a power hitter. They're going to give him a chance to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Uh, they probably waited as long as they could before they sent him down and try to get him in form position. And uh, it was just one of those things. Diego, uh, I, I felt like, made him stop, and which is the important thing uh, to myself as a catcher and throwing runners out. The guys that get the running lead, you just don't throw them out. I don't care if they're Washingtons or uh, not-so-fast guys. You, you just It's a tough time to do it. But Diego made a good pitch on him in that situation, and uh, I just happened to get the ball away good, and uh, the ball, the throw was, was pretty well down at the bag because if it's up the least little bit, that guy's going to be there. Yeah, he's there. Now, you said you were surprised he didn't go earlier. I was surprised you didn't call a pitch out earlier thinking that you were thinking he was going to go. Well, uh, it went through my mind, but I'm saying to myself, if I've got Jackson uh, in the hole with two strikes as we did after the first two pitches, uh, if they're going to let him go, go ahead. Uh, uh, if, if I'm going to have to call a pitch out, I might call it two times in a row, and he's still at first base. And now I'm even with Jackson, and I've got to come with something pretty much around the plate. If I've got Jackson 0-2 in the hole, then I can do a little bit of work on him. And I, I'd rather, I think, have him in that situation, and I had having a little bit of an advantage trying to throw Washington. He might, he might beat you on a, on, even on a pitch out. He did the other night in Chicago. <laughs> I'm sure. You know, or now, I, I, that may sound like uh, that's a little bit funny to some fans that might be listening, but a guy who runs like he does, if, uh, if you still don't make the throw down around the, the bag, the knees on the guy receiving that ball at the bag, he's going to be in there because it's, by the time he gets the ball up, shoulder high, and gets down to the bag, Mr. Washington is safe. Well, Bob, it was a big ball game for you fellows again today. Uh, I know you're pressing hard to take that Eastern Division crown, and you're looking like the best ball club the A's have seen this year, and you really have the A's number. Seven out of nine is a pretty good record. Well, you know, this happened a couple of years ago when we were fighting tooth and toenail uh, with Detroit at the time, or in Baltimore as it wound down to the end of the season. We lost by half a game, and uh, that year I think we beat the A's 9 out of 12 times. Uh, I hope that our domination over them so far this year doesn't lead to the same ending of 74 as it did in 72. But uh, I feel like we have a lot better ball club uh, this year than we did in 72. Our, our pitching is certainly stronger, and we have some young guys who have just been doing a tremendous job, and guys like Burleson and Evans and uh, Diego Segui and Bob Bill both have been doing a great job out of the bullpen, and it, it seems like it's more of a together ball club than I, I've seen the Red Sox have since I've been with them. Well, you got to give some of that credit to Bay Area guy named Daryl Johnson. Bob, thanks very much for being our guest today. Congratulations to you on a big play, and I know it's a pleasure catching those guys you're catching. We'll see you some more up in Boston next week, I guess. I hope so. Thank you. Next series opens here tomorrow night at the Coliseum with a family night. Everybody gets in for half price. The Oakland A's will send Jim Catfish Hunter out after his 17th victory against the New York Yankees, who will throw Pat Dobson against the A's. Game time, 8 o'clock, and our broadcast will start at 7.45. We'll see you then. John Miller here for Monty Moore and our producer engineer, Mike Marquardt. Thanks for being with us. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast today, and have a nice Sunday afternoon. This is the Golden Pacific Sports Network. Time now is 4.15 as we join Mutual's wide weekend of sports already in progress. The executive director of the NFL Players Association made the announcement here in Washington. We have decided that in the interest of the National Football League, in the interest of this country, in the interest of the players, that we will accept that offer by the federal mediator to have a cooling off period of 14 days. We'll be asking the players to go into camp on Wednesday. Jack Tatum, safety for the Oakland Raiders, was asked if there would be any animosity between striking and non-striking football players. Uh, last year, you know, we, we seem to get really close to the team, so I don't think that's going to hurt us at all. I think, I think uh, you know, everybody's a big enough man just to look over it. You know, it's a personal decision if you want to go into camp, you go in. If you don't, stay out support the strike. But uh, I think as a team, we'll stay together. In the PGA Golf Championship at Tanglewood Country Club, Clemens, North Carolina, Lee Trevino, with new confidence and a new putter, came through with a four-under par for the four rounds to win, beating Jack Nicklaus by one stroke. Two more strokes behind were four players, Sammy Sneed, Dave Hill, Hubert Green, and Bobby Cole.